I'm Dr. Jane Locke. I'm a holistic healer and a chiropractor. But I wasn't always that. Um, I am actually a graduate of Beaver College, which is now Arcadia University. <laughs> Um, 1969, and when I was here, I was an English major. Pretty generic and certainly avoiding all, all uh, science classes, thank you very much. <laughs> but life conspires to give us our lessons, and in my mid to late 30s, I chose to become a chiropractor, and for very specific reasons. But I will tell you that part of that was uh, risky for me, because I was raised by a very mainstream father. And I remember telling him the first time that I wanted to be a chiropractor, and he said, what do you want to do that for? Well, part of his fear was that it was woo-woo. Now, what is woo-woo? When I chose the title for this talk, everybody said, what's woo-woo? Well, woo-woo is typically used as a pejorative term, uh, a dismissive um, sense that whatever it is that you're uh, doing or involved with is maybe not fully scientific enough. Um, that it is certainly not mainstream and a little bubble off beam. And I grant you, right now, that is what I am. And I'm at peace with it and proud of it. Um, but even within chiropractic, I am not mainstream. Um, typically, when I tell people I'm a chiropractor, they will, you know, they, something appears in their head. And it's always, well, she's not mainstream. And actually, nowadays, we are classed as alternative and complementary. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm not that snap, crackle, pop chiropractor. I do something a little different. I use a very gentle instrument. It happens to be called an arthrostim. It's very specific and very much tailored to benefit both the patient and make it easy for me. Um, so there's a great specificity to what it is that I do. It's not generic, it's not one size fits all. It's about you, whoever you is on, on, on my table or standing before me. One of the things that I use with that technique is something called muscle testing. Some of you may know the, the word kinesiology. I'll get to it. Kinesiology has, has evolved to encompass all types of muscle, all kinds of types of muscle testing. But it's key and a little woo-woo um, in my office. So here I am. I can adjust you. I can, as a doctor of chiropractic, I'm also, if you will, a doctor of connectivity. My job is to connect you with you. The idea of the adjustment is to align the nervous system to enhance the body's communication with itself. You're not going to make good choices. You're not going to live your life optim optimally if part of what you're doing is using a lot of energy just to be. So a good adjustment is a wonderful thing. But my office is called Lock Chiropractic and, in big letters, Natural Healing Center. What's a natural healing center? Well, in smaller letters under my sign is chiropractic, nutrition, and neuroemotional technique. So somebody walks into my office. They don't feel good. They want an adjustment. But the other thing is, I'll give them a very specific questionnaire and ask them questions about their nutritional health, their biochemical health. Because again, you can't make good decisions. You can't connect with yourself if you're a quart low or deficient or imbalanced in some nutrient. So I want to know that. And guess how I know that? I use muscle testing. So here we are. I might have adjusted you. I might have supplied you with some fabulous nutrition, but you're still not getting better. That little neuroemotional technique that takes up so much room on that bottom side, that's where I go next sometimes. And you can see I've wandered far to the side of mainstream at this point. But what neuroemotional technique is, and, and there are other similar techniques. Emotional freedom technique is one of them. And I'm not advocating anything, except this is a very personal expor exploration for you to learn about you. So here I am. I've got somebody. I've adjusted them. I've nourished them. And they're still not getting better. So what do I need to do? I need to use this muscle testing technique to and these are all various forms of, if you will, languages. 
Um, it's a feedback experience between me and that other person using this muscle testing. I use that to, if you will, talk to the body, learn what the emotional piece is, and all of this is based in traditional Chinese medicine meridians, um, energy pathways that, that flow through our bodies. And like any lovely stream of energy, stream of, if, like water, Sometimes you have rocks in your water, sometimes you have a dam in your water, and everything either gets chaotic or, or slowed down. My job is to find out where that is, what that is in you, because the individual is who I, I work with. Um, it's kind of like the story of the starfish, two people walking on the beach, and there's starfish littering the beach, dying on the beach. And that's kind of the way, I, you're not dying when you come into my office, for sure. But there are parts of you that need reconnection. And if they don't reconnect, which is my job, is to help you reconnect, part of you will not be optimal. And so we go into that woo-woo place where I use this strange-looking technique to bring you back to the center of yourself and to enable you to become most authentically you. And it is in that authenticity, in that knowing of yourself, where each one of us finds our passion, finds our creativity, and becomes a leader, sometimes overtly, you know, big political leaders, leaders like the, the wonderful man who was right here, um, talking about um, how you design and, and create, create a life that, is, uh, that demonstrates leadership. But sometimes, all of us lead simply by our being. And I find this particularly with caretakers. And even, even with big leaders, how do we judge a leader? We judge a leader not just by what they do, but who they are. And so each one of you is precious and valuable. And I will promise, too, that each one of you will find a dark place sometimes. Um, when I was here at Beaver, it was a wonderful experience. But I wasn't the authentic woman that I am now. I remember at 13 crying to my father that I felt terribly alone. And bless his heart, being a, a uh, mainstream kind of guy, he wanted to drive me to my friend's house and I would be fine. Well, I wasn't fine. By the time I was 20 and driving to Beaver, I was also looking at bridge abutments because I was that unhappy, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't know why. And by the time I was in my early to mid-30s, there literally was a day when I chose to remain here as opposed to not being here. What leads somebody with a wonderful life to be that unhappy? I had become disconnected. My father was mainstream, let's go with, I was raised in the 50s, come on guys, 50s and early 60s. Um, my mother was unconditional love, enduring, but my grandmother was woo-woo. My grandmother, you would walk into her house and to the, to the one side was her dining room, which was a painting studio. The other side was occupied by a large grand piano. And what she did once when we were there, and I was in my early teens and impressionable and easily confused and amazed, she took us to the Theosophical Society of Cleveland. Does anybody know what theosophy is? Most people don't. It's a, it's a belief system that acknowledges the truth in all religions. And over and above that, she had finished this enormous mural showing People ascending a staircase, becoming essentially beams of light as they were moving into their, their dead bodies, their, 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 you know, they've died. But then it also um, demonstrated re reincarnation. I was 13. I didn't know what to do with that. But I certainly took it in. And I took it in with all the love and the creativity and the leadership and the passion that was my grandmother. So, conventional father, woo-woo grandmother, loving mother. I married a man who was not right for me, 
and by my mid-30s was miserable, chose not to disappear from this planet, but in the moment that I chose to be here, I also chose to create a life for myself that was seamless, that was an expression of everything I thought and believed in, and I didn't know that I did it in the moment. I just knew that I couldn't be that person that I had been before. And all of us have those, maybe you won't ever decide you won't commit suicide, please God, that you don't go that far. But nobody gets through life scot-free. All of us have ups and downs and places where we find that are dark. And it took a long time and a lot of searching for me to find a way out of that dark place. I got a lot of help, not from the people around me. I had to reach and search for it. But one of the things that really helped me was when I became that woo-woo chiropractor, I had decided to move my life into what it is that I really believed in. My father didn't. I didn't know he'd had such a big influence on me. But I decided that I was going to be myself. And in making that initial decision, even getting into school, and then the evolution of the things that I was exposed to after that, the muscle testing pretty much embodies what it is that enabled me to do a lot of that inner exploration because it is so very specific. Now, I would like my Vanna White to come up, please. I'm going to demonstrate what it is to do this muscle testing so you understand how lovely and specific it is and how, no, I need you to come around this way. Thank you. We didn't practice this. Deliberately. And I'm going to put these down and you're going to pick them up one by one because I don't bend well. Um, all right, so we are all complete electrical circuits. Uh, I don't know whether there are any science majors in here, but this was news to me, being an English major. Um, I can ask Madison to hold her arm up, and she does. That's her brain and her spinal cord making sure that her arm stays up. And I'm going to ask you to lock your elbow. Thank you. And it has no problem staying up. I'm going to press on it lightly, and I do it lightly because I do this all day long, and I get really tired really fast, don't you know? And it, I feel what is called the lock of the muscle. It's not going anywhere. You can, can you feel that, Madison? Say yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. All right. So I can press on this, and you can see, I don't know whether you can see just a little bit of a give. But when I put my finger here on Madison, it doesn't take much to move that arm down. Now, if I'm doing this on some of you young men, I'll get a real strong arm. And I'll have to really push hard to demonstrate this. And anybody who wants to see this after the, the, the show, I'll do another show. Um, this is just the physical body. When I put my finger here, what we're engaging is the electromagnetic system of the body. Again, we don't plug into the wall at night to recharge. The brain and the, the heart create a, uh, an electrical circuit, but every complete electrical circuit, and, I'll remember, and I remember an old-timey electrician sitting there saying, yeah, you're right, um, electromagnetic system. I have one. Madison has one. And when I put my finger here, it's like blowing the uh, circuit breaker in your house. Everything, you know, everything goes a little haywire. What your body's doing is interpreting what's coming close to it. Now, if Madison were my chiropractic patient, I was, and I was checking her structurally, I, I wouldn't do this, but it's worthwhile for demonstration. I'd literally put a hand over a joint. How's that joint? How's that joint? That joint. Oh, typically, this joint isn't so hot, and it, it isn't on Madison. So I would know that I needed to adjust there. Literally, what her body is doing with that electromagnetic system. And again, the Chinese have known this for 5,000 years with their meridians, their energy pathways. Remember that, that um, uh, rocks in the river or a dam, too much or too little? Literally, when I put my hand on her sacroiliac joint, it's signaling 
and they have actual machines now that can, that can evaluate this, how cool is that, um, it's signaling to me that it needs help. Now I can, with techniques that I know, determine not just that it needs help, but what direction it needs help in, and even the amount of force that I have to use. There are other ways that I can, I can check her uh, using a level of her skull or her feet to determine the priority of that adjustment. That's a pretty smart body. That's a pretty specific gift I can give to Madison. And that will start to reconnect her nervous system and the internal communication in her body. But for me, that's not enough, because I really like Madison. We only met, but I like her. <laughs> I also want to check and make sure that Madison's nutrition is what it should be. And I can go through the, yes, she's a college student. We'll just give it up with that. Um, I can check the integrity of, you don't need to know all of this, but the integrity of your autonomic nervous system. Oh, honey, you're in trouble. She is. She needs a little help. So, poor Madison. She's a college student. What do you want? So I have ways of correcting that um, using some homeopathic vials. Homeopathic vials? Do I... Homeopathic vials literally have the energy of whatever substance it is that I want to question Madison's body about. So I hold the homeopathic vials against her and we get a, a, if you will, a yes or a no depending on the muscle strength that I'm, I'm uh, depending on the response we get from the muscle test. Now, I have brought a few little test things. Can you get that first one? All right, so Madison is going to not hold this one. Here we go. She's, she's going to hold this one. It's coffee, my morning coffee. Now, you're going to hold it against right here. Actually, I'm going to take it away. We're going to start with a nice, strong arm. Hold this against your body. Doesn't like it. It literally, the energy of this weakens Madison's body. Now, oh, it's decaf coffee. Do you know what they do to process decaf coffee? It ain't pretty. So <laughs> Madison's body knows that energetically. This is the question. This is the woo-woo. How does it know it? I don't know. I really don't know, but I will tell you that it does know it. Now, I say that with all grace, because what I also know is that maybe somebody in this audience is going to figure out the receptor that lives, does live in our human bodies, that literally exchanges energy. Everything has a vibrational imprint. Everything has a vibrational signature. And if it adds to you, your muscles stay strong, and it's a good thing for you. But if it detracts, then, it, then the muscle goes weak. Where does that come from? I don't know. But the strangest receptor I know of is a proprioceptor. And I always have trouble saying that. It's the receptor in your body. And they've identified it. They know where it lives. It tells your body where your parts are in space. I put my hand back here. And it's, just no, it's not just a muscle memory. But there is an actual receptor that tells that. So poor me. Madison, she's had decaf coffee this morning. Oh my God. What am I going to do? Hold the two of those together against your body. And now that arm stays strong. What I know is in here is an adsorbent clay that will take the toxicity, she'll eliminate it, and that's the polite word. And so I wouldn't advocate her having decaf coffee, but if she does, if she encounters toxins, if she spends too much time in a, a, a formaldehyde uh, uh, situation, I remember my hands going numb when we <laughs> dissected bodies. Colocol 2 would have been a good, the, the bentonite clay would have been a good uh, product. At any rate, what I'm trying to show you is, oh, and I haven't shown you the emotional stuff. Hold your arm up. I want you to say, my name is Madison. My name is Madison. Her body agrees, her arm stays strong. I want you to say, my name is Harold. My name is Harold. And her arm goes down because she's really <laughs> not Harold. 
Now, what I want you folks to do is think something lovely for Madison. Just think. And she, oh, she's rock solid. Thank you all. Now, just for a moment, I want you to think, oh, Madison's a rotten, miserable, and I'm, I'm serious, please. And, and literally, your thoughts affect her energetically. It absolutely affects her. Emotionally, she's affected. Now, let's not leave Madison thinking she's a whatever. So I want you to, again, feel love toward Madison. And once again, she's strong. We are all affecting each other every day. And when you become uniquely Madison, when you uncover the things that are disconnecting for you, whether it's structural, whether it's the nutrition that you take in, whether it's any of your emotional issues, and I just touched lightly on that, all of us will have ups and downs in our lives. But this leads you to authentic Madison, authentic Jane, authentic you. And in that authenticity, in that knowing who you are, that's where the passion comes. That's where the leadership is, is expressed. Thank you. <laughs>